Hey YouTube, Randa Tez here. Happy Sunday. I know, I know my video is late. <laughs> uh, yesterday uh, we planned, you know, I was like, okay, let me go out. And then I thought I'll be back by afternoon, but it turned out to be night. So I was like, okay, I'll have to move the video today. Uh, so here am I, here I am again. <laughs> so I hope you guys are having a good weekend. And in our previous video, I showed you the basics of Blender. I hope uh, that helped. Uh, many people commented and it got about thousand views. So thank you all so much for that. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't want to be one of those uh, who set the thumbnail, but you know, <laughs> they don't actually make it and you're like, damn it, I knew this guy. Okay, and then you just call the FBI on me and then uh, no, please don't do that. Uh, so there you go. Uh, that's the thumbnail, right? I have it in my PureF open for you guys so we shall try to at least make it right just using vanilla blender no add-ons right for all new beginners so that you understand how i would model it right and if you haven't checked my previous video please do that because then you you'll understand exactly uh like at least the basics which should immediately get you started in blender okay so please watch that video and once you're done you can hop on here and in this video, we'll just be modeling it. And I'll show you the easiest way to model whatever is on screen, okay? So hop on, boot up your Blender, and let's get this started. Okay, awesome. So now, obviously, we'll make the, uh, we'll make the keys, and then we'll make the outer cover, and then we'll make this wiring for it, okay? So before anything, let's just let's just go ahead and make a key right you can start off with the base or with the key so the only reason i'm starting off with the key is once you have your keys dimension you can just double it right so you'll have two keys and once you have that then setting the base for it is simple because you can just readjust it because if you make the base and then the key then you'll have to like snug fit the key in and then it'll be a little bit more work right so just take your main important component which is the keys you can see that those two are the biggest on the reference right so let's uh, go ahead and model that we're not going to overcomplicate this i just want you guys to at least get a visual look for this okay so let's start so obviously let's take a cube okay i'm just going to push this a little up here Right? So all this movement and all this push, it's already done in my previous video. Please check that out again. Okay, I'll stop saying that now. Okay, cool. So uh, if you notice any keyboard key, the top face is actually smaller than the bottom face, right? So we'll go to tab mode, take our face selection, select our face here, press S to scale and scale it. You see? What I mean, this is usually how a key is, right? It's smaller on the top and wider on the bottom. And now, if you just look at the height of this key, this is just too much. So I'm just gonna snap it to an orthographic wheel, press G and Z to go on the axis and then push it down. And you guys can see that, yeah, this this looks good. Awesome, right? So this this height looks good of the key. And you can already see that, yeah, it looks good. It looks like uh, the, the solid, you know, the block out of the key is almost done. Now, you see that this has a curve, right? This key has a curve here. So um, how do we do that? Okay, awesome. So one very quick way is if you hit Control R, you will be able to add edge loops. So I'm just gonna click on the center and just right click to cancel the movement of it. And then it snaps in the center, right? Now that you have a loop in the center, let's bevel this. So bevel that, spread it across, and then give it loops. That's what I'm going to do. And once the loops are, uh, we are happy with the loops, right? Uh, then what are we going to do? We're going to take an edge. Let's just snap it, yeah. And then select this and this, right? And then if I press G and Z, you can see that I can move that edge up and down, right? Perfect, but how do we get the curve? That is if we switch on this proportional editing uh, and once that's on right I'm just going to press G and now do you see how it works look at that right everything's explained everything's explained in my previous video <laughs> so I'm just gonna press Z and now you can see that I can give 
a curve to it, right? So I'm gonna give it a slight curve. There you go, perfect. That that looks that looks good, right? Let's just go to object mode and just just look at your key. You see, with such simple steps, right? We already got a keyboard key, right? Now all you have to do is bevel the edges. You guys see this? The edges here, which need beveling. That's it. Those are the only ones. So before we do anything, let's go into edit mode. Select a face. So you can select this face, hold shift. Wait, is it control shift? Yes, control shift. If you hold control shift and then click on the other face, it will select all the faces in the middle. Press X, delete faces, right? We don't need those. Those are anyways going to be at the bottom. So you don't want to see them. Awesome. Now that this is done, go to object, select the object, go to object, uh, apply, and then all transforms. When you do that, the location, rotation, and the scale of that object is set to default. So all zero here, and then one here, right? So this is basically a clean mesh now, with all transforms perfect. Now that this is done, go to edit, right? Go into edge selection, select this, 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 and control shift, remember? Control shift, select uh, the whole edge over here, whole edge here, and then let go of alt, wait, alt shift, sorry, and then just hold shift and you should be able to select the rest of the edges and you see why I selected all these edges right because it's these are the only edges which have the bevel as you can see in the reference so once this is done control B Ta -da! <laughs> that's it that's it guys don't overcomplicate it right it's very simple so the once you bevel this uh, let's just give it the thickness it deserves and then maybe just one more loop now go to object mode, check that out, right? Your key looks great now. Uh, this is a bevel acting stupid in Blender because it's not, look at that, it, it has this weird curve to it. I don't know why it does that. But then over here, look how clean it is. And over here, j just look at this, dude. Look at Blender acting stupid. Check this out, see? Check this side out and then check this side out. We didn't do anything. Everything was perfect, right? But somehow it just doesn't like it. So one way to fix this, I believe, is we can start adding mirrors to this, right? So let's let's try. Let's try and see how this works, okay? So if I go here and then go into edit mode, you see that we don't have a center uh, edge, right? So control R, there you go and then right click to deselect. And you notice now we have a center edge, right? To the key. Now what we can do is go into the side view, Alt Shift, select that, and then delete faces. Once this is deleted, select the place which is not good. Just, just select any face. Press L and it selects the whole object connected to that. Press X and then you can delete it, right? Awesome. So now that this is done, you can take this and you can see that uh, Blender has gone crazy here as well. We can fix that as well. So go into Edit, Control R, add a center loop right here, uh, and check this out. It's not centered. If you notice, you see this curve here. So make sure you're checking all that, right? So go on the top view, right? Press S. Oh, remove proportional editing. Press S, and then press X. You want to scale it on the X and then press zero. When you hit zero, check that out, it straightens it. And then left click to approve that. Now, let me show you guys, see? It's perfect, right? So once this is done, uh, what you can do now is go ahead and delete this, I guess. Let's see. I'm also still hoping this will work. So I'm gonna delete all the faces, select a face here, press L, press X, delete face. There you go, that's it. So now I'll tell you guys what I actually did. I just have one fourth of the key, correct? And this one fourth piece, this side piece is perfect. You can see that it has no issues. It looks good, right? So we, why did we do this? Because we are hoping to mirror this piece itself, right? So I'll show you. So when you select this, you can go on to add on here, click on a modifier and just hit a mirror modifier, guys. When you hit mirror, see how it mirrors it? And you know why it mirrors it this way? Because your axis is set to X, right? So it takes this, here, let me explain it. This object here, 
and this is the axis, right? This is the x-axis. So it takes this object, looks at its center pivot, which is at the center of the grid, and on the x-axis, it flips it. I hope you understand, right? So it takes the object on the red axis, checks where the center is, and then it just creates a duplicate and fixes it. Now, you see that this side of the key is missing, and you notice this green here? So this is the y-axis, right? And our center pivot is here. So we want this whole piece to be mirrored here as well, right? On this side of the Y. So all you have to do is just click Y. I hope you understand that. Now, if I remove X, you see what happened? This side, the X axis got removed. So play with your modifiers. This is one important thing I tell you in the first video, right? You guys have to play with Blender. You'll have to click on stuff and then check how it works, right? That's the best way to learn it. So you can see that we needed X and Y and look at our key now. Because one piece was perfect, it just duplicated and mirrored that piece everywhere now. And your key is beautiful now, perfect? Awesome, once this is done, you can switch on merge here. What this merge does is, do you remember the cut in the middle? Because these are individual four pieces, right? They are not merged. You just took one and then you just duplicated it and you took these two and you duplicated it on the other side, right? So they are not merged in the center. When you check merge, Blender automatically merges it, right? So you can just like put 0.1 and it'll merge, but 0.1 is like really big. So 0.001 should be good, right? And then go to edit. See? It just takes this, right? And then it's doing it. So once this is applied, if you just go ahead, oh, obviously you need to be in object mode. And once this is done, you just hit apply. Ta-da. And now go into edit. See? It's perfect. Here is where something went wrong. Do you see this gap here? It's because the merge value you set was not enough, right? That's why this did not work. If you just go Control Z, check this out, right? This value is too small. The distance between those two vertices was more than 0 0.001. That's why it did not merge it, right? So let's increase our distance. Let's say just, let's just go with 0.1. Let's see what happens. If I go 0.1 and then apply, Hit tab and go to edit mode. It's fixed. That's it. So you guys understood what Blender did. So the distance between those two vertices was less than 0.1. So when we said 0.1, it just looked at all the vertices of the model and then it's like, okay, these two are really close and they're below 0.1. So let me just merge them. That's, it. That's all I did, right? And with that, your key is ready. That's it. That's all it takes to make a keyboard key, this one at least. And if you, you see these, you can just go and go ahead and sharpen this and it should sharpen. And we yeah, obviously it sharpened this part. So we will go to edit mode here. Let me just check one thing guys, if it's truly merged, okay? Because, oh dude, look at this, see? See, this, this is exactly what I wanted to check. Even though we did everything right, you can notice that, yeah, you look at that, see, duplicate vertices. Uh, let me just check here. I don't, I don't think it'll be here, yeah. You, you saw that weird sharpness it gave to that edge here? It's because of that. So one way to fix this is very simple. I'll show you, uh, just go to wireframe and we remember that it was this, right? Yeah, there you go, see? So I'm going to go here select all these middle right and then press m when you hit m it says it's it's a merge right i want to merge by distance i want to merge by distance and then see if i increase this you see how it, everything gets merged now if you hold shift oh wait one second yeah if you hold shift, you should have a smoother control, right? So I'm just going to lower this. You can see that it's lowering and all the vertices start coming back. There you go. And I'm just going to let it rest. Yeah, exactly how I want it. Now that this is done, 
Now you can just click anywhere else, left click, and it should get applied. Now let's test it. Ta -da. So it did merge it. The only problem is there were duplicate vertices for some reason, right? So we selected all the vertices and then we hit another merge. So just M and then just adjust the value so that all the vertices still look good, right? Give it a high value, merge everything to a center, right? Do that first and then start reducing value so that the vertices start coming out. And as soon as they look perfect, you know that it's perfect merge. So just let that go, right? So press tab, go into object and press Z and go into solid. There you go. Let's try sharpening the model again. And we did it. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Beautiful. Great. Awesome. Look at that. That's our key. And that's our render view. Oh my God, that looks beautiful. Awesome. So now that you have this, right, you don't have to work on another key, right, or, or, or another key. So let's just go to the top view. We go to object, um, apply, and then all transforms. Let's do that. And then with the object selected, shift D. And you see, you take a duplicate, right? Right click to cancel the operation G and Y to move it on the Y axis. And over here, you can give the gap you guys want. You can make it a bigger one or a small one. But just for this reference sake, I'm just going to do it this way. There you go, see, two keys. Right, now let's make the base, right? The base, uh, you can see that it should be pretty simple. So let's do that. Uh, okay, cool. What you can do is, you see that this key is not aligned to the center of the grid. If that's something you guys like to do, then you'll have to like select both, control J and it'll join them. And then I'm going to just say origin to geometry and it should snap the origin, this, this dot here to the center. You can even go to object, set origin and you'll have everything here. So origin to geometry is just here. So when you do that, this sets it in the center. Now I want this to come to that 3D cursor, right? So shift S and then you say this uh, pi comes out. So selection to cursor and there you go. You just snap your keys right at the center. If that's something you guys like to work, right? You just, it makes life easier. Now, if I just bring this up, readjust my render cam, check that out. Now it's in the center. So basically now if I go in and add a cube, everything is centered and perfectly aligned. OCD, but there you go, awesome. So now it looks good. Let's make this uh, side ones now, okay? Cool, now, how do we do that? Okay, first of all, I'm going to go to the side press G, see, bring it down and go top and you can see that it's perfectly aligned here. So I'm going to scale it on the x-axis, right? And this, this gap here, what I'm trying to get is this gap here, guys, this one, right? So it's that gap. Now I can press S and then Y, scale this. Look at that, perfect. Okay, now that we have this base and you know that the gap is set, right? What all, all you guys have to do now is, uh, let's go to edit. So now if you want, you can set the width of this. You can just do it now itself. So let's do that. Go to edit, take the face, select this face, go to the side view, G and Z. Uh, how about that? Does that look good? You guys can see on my render view, right? So I'm looking at something like that. Perfect, yeah, that looks good. That looks okay, right? Awesome. Now, we'll just take the face. Oh, before anything, just take this, go into object, apply all transforms. If you don't wanna keep doing this, right? If I hit uh, here, I'll show you. So then if you don't wanna keep doing that, just go to objects, apply. You see all transforms, just right click on it. And then you see add to quick favorites, just do that. Now check this out. If you ever want to do that uh, option again, click on an object, press Q, and you see how it says quick favorites, and you have all transforms there. That's it. It's as simple as that. And just click on it, and it'll do the same thing. You don't need to just keep going back. So it's a quick favorite list, which just opens quickly. Okay, awesome. Now with that done, let's go into edit mode. Select the faces. I'm going to hold Alt and just click on this face here, on the edge of the face, and it should select the face loop. See? 
that's how it is right now what you have to do is if you press e it extrudes right so shift was it shift or was it alt alt e yes it was alt e so press alt e and then you will get the menu for extrude what you need is extrude faces along normals when you do that your mouse cursor changes so you guys can extrude it now check that out do you see this this width i'm giving is the width of that uh case right so you guys can give that now there you go i think that's perfect right this width is what i'm talking about right i hope you guys are following and this is the gap with it awesome cool now that's pretty much it that, that should uh, that should do it so now that that's complete you guys can notice that it obviously has a soft and curved edge and you guys would know how to give that select that that this and this and then bevel that's it ta -da, right and if you give bevel see how it perfectly snaps so you guys can go ahead and increase it right mouse wheel wheel if you scroll mouse wheel it increases something like that looks good oh let's just go to the top view and check oh yeah that looks great awesome i'm just going to go to object mode Ta -da! i hope it's i hope it's simple right whatever i'm showing you guys it's not too much it's it's a simple modeling but you see that with just such little tools you can almost get a model like this right and here check this out if you zoom in do you see this ridge don't miss that, right? You should always be precise in your modeling. If you guys can add that, if, if you guys can add that detail, do it. It will make your model look better. So you see there's a, um, there's like a small ridge running around. Let's add that, so go to edit mode. Control R, click, and you see that it's not halfway as well. That's also another important point to note. It is somewhere along this line here, right? At the bottom. Now that this is done, zoom in, control B to bevel it. I'm going to remove all the bevels and then just give it that ridge, just like that, right? And once that ridge is done, here, I'll zoom in and I'll show you guys. Do the same exact thing, Alt E, extrude along normals and see how it comes out, but we want it in. That's it, your ridge is done. This small detail is basically what was there on that model. Now, all you guys have to do is go to this face selection, select this face, right? And you see that it's pushed in. You see how in it's pushed? This, this inward push here, right? Let's do that before we do that. I just realized that even this is a curve. Do you see that? So now this will cause problems. It's because, see, this, the, the, I just wanted to show you that I messed up, I, uh, right? So this curve should have been made while you made this curve. It's because now you see these edges here, these won't allow you to bevel, right? Because you see this point, this is a concentration point. It's because it's just so many uh, edges are going into one. So this will cause issues, right? Because we messed up, we go fix it. Let's go fix it. So we obviously we will have to control Z quite a few times. So let's just go back all the way to this. This is the step which we should have fixed already, right? And I'll, I'll show you guys what we had to fix. We had to take this phase and do the extrusion right now. That was the first thing we had to do, right? If you guys already realized that before this mistake, amazing you guys are doing really good right and i'm super proud of you but if you guys followed me and we fell back into the same trap even better because only when you fail can you learn right so let's just go fix that back again so press e and you should uh be able to extrude so i'm just gonna give it the depth do you see it right now that it has the depth now try to bevel it and you guys will understand what i'm trying to tell if you go to object mode i'm just going to go hit all transform see how quicker it is and then come into edit i'm just going to select this edge select this edge now do you see this edge goes all the way in here same thing with this same thing with this and this right 
Now try to bevel it and see the difference. If you hit Control-B, do you see it? Even the inner part is beveled, right? I'm just gonna cancel that, go on the top view, right? And show you guys clearly. Control-B, look at that. That's the difference. That's what we wanted actually. And now give edge loops to it. Do you guys understand what we missed? Now, see, it's so much easier, right? Because now the inner part is also beveled with the outer one. And you can now perfectly, precisely give that and then accept it. Go to object mode. Ta-da! This is what we missed. And now you can see that all these edges are perfectly aligned with these edges. That last time was just concentrated on a point. So how do you bevel that? You can't. It's just too hard, right? So this was a very important step. Now that this is done, let's uh, select this edge here, right? You guys need to select this edge, select this, and then select this edge. When you select this, you can see that there's a small bevel here. So let's give it that bevel. Just like that, right? And then Control R, click, drag it down, and then Control B, and then remove all the loops. Give it that. Perfect. Alt E, along normals, and push it in. Ta-da! That's it. Finished, right? And we got the ridge, which we were missing last time. Now, you can just select edge. Uh, remember, hold Alt, and then Alt Shift to select multiple. I'm going to select that edge. Ooh, wait. I want to zoom in. If you want to zoom in really smoothly, then Control, middle mouse click, and then move your mouse, right? And then it just, it's smoother. And then let's do it again. Alt shift, select this, and Alt shift, select that. Once that's selected, Control B, you can see that it gives a bevel. Hold shift for smoother control, and then mouse wheel scroll to give you a bevel more re resolution, and then left click. Ta da! That's it. And go to object. Now check that out. Look at that. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, awesome. Now that this is done, uh, you guys can go ahead and give it a quick shopping and it should fix everything. Yep, awesome. That looks clean. Look at that, dude. Look, look at the render view, see? And ch check this. See, you see how we are almost close, right? It's simple. So now, obviously the keys are floating up. So let's just go into, oh, I messed up. Let's just go to wireframe mode. And with wireframe, you can see the depth of what you gave. Right. And with that depth, if you press a G and Z, you can actually now move this and actually adjust it. So I'm just going to adjust it so that there's a small gap here. And then go to object mode. Right. Go to solid. And there you go. Save your work. Remember to save your work. <laughs> the amount of crashes, dude, I swear to God. OK. Now, looking at this, see? It looks good. If you feel that the keys are still too tall, like in my case here, right? What can you do is obviously select the keys, select only the bottom ones. So let me show you, go to wireframe here and then go into edit, select these, select all these and then press GZ and push them all. Right? I hope that makes sense. Go to object, select this and obviously We'll have to move this up as well. There you go. And now solid. There. Is that better? Right? So you can do tiny adjustments like that. And with that, it's done. The keys are literally done with their casing. Just, just I hope that was easy. Yeah. So with that, uh, this part is complete. The other part, this one is going to be a little tricky. So let's start with that. Okay. Firstly, uh, if you guys want, we can make this part here. So now we get complicated because you notice how this one is a different shape and this one is completely circular, right? So it's going to take a little time. Here, I'm going to show you the most simplest way you can do. I'm just going to select this press, or you guys can come here to your outliner and just hide these pieces, right? I'm just going to hide them so that they don't distract us. And let's just work on this piece. So let's add a cube, right? Bring it up and le let's just make it big because we can always scale it, right? So you don't have to worry about that. So once this is done, I'm just going to scale it in the Y 
you can see I'm just giving it the thickness. There you go. Does that look good? Yeah, okay. And then scale on the X. And this thickness is basically this part, right? And you see it looks good now. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, how do we make this circle? Well, if you go into Edit and Control R, select the center, let it go, right? Select the edge, Control B, bevel it, and just give, this is basically me setting the diameter of the uh, circle which is protruding out, right guys? So I'll, you guys will understand. If I move this a little bit more, I'll give it more resolution. That's something I like. Yeah, that looks good. And then Control R, select it here, deselect, bevel, move it, and then there you go. Perfect. Right? Awesome. That looks good. And then, if you want, now what we have to do is basically select a bunch of faces, just like that, for our circle, or maybe the whole thing. If you really want this to be the circle, this protruding out circle, right? So I think that looks good. But I believe we can give a little bit of a gap. So by that, what I mean is, if I press Control R, I'm just going to add these edge loops here, right? If you want, or because we wanna, we want this gap to be still present, or else just working on the edge will just make your modeling really hard. You know what? For this, this video thing, I'm just gonna make it very simple. I'm just going to select these ones for you guys. There you go, and you guys will understand what I'm trying to say now. So if I select this, press uh, X delete faces. Now that these faces are deleted, check this out. Uh, this thing won't be active for you guys. Uh, what you will have to do, it's actually a inbuilt plugin guys. So go to edit, preferences, right? Go into get extension. Just go into get extension, type in loop. And when you hit loop, do you see loop tools? And you will see an icon called install here, right next to it, install this. Once this is installed, I'll tell you what it does, right? And you guys will really like this. When you have your model selected, go to edit mode, go to vertice, and then just hold alt and click. And then you see this is this is the opening which we want circleized, right? And then just right click. When you right click, do you see loop tools here? And then you'll have a circle option. Just hit this and check what it does. You see how it circleizes the whole vertex group? And now, if you zoom in, zoom out, do you see how the oval is actually matching the stretch of the cube, right? This is where I wanted to tell you guys. If you control Z, come back to object, Q, and then all transforms. Once you clean this out, because if you don't clean it out, do you see the scale value? This had the stretch. Let me control Z. Do you see this too? Because it's stretched on the X, even your circle will stretch two times. That's what's happening. So now that this is selected, press Q and then all transforms and check the scale value. There, it just goes back to default. Now that this is done, go to edit. You see your vertices are selected. Try this again. Loop tools, circle, and bam. Ta-da, you guys got it, right? So this is the magic loop tools create. I hope you like this uh, one. And once this is selected, if you hit R, you can rotate this. So you see, you can like mess your mesh off like I'm doing right now. So I'm just gonna relax it more because you see how this edge is tilted so much to the left, I don't want that. And this will be tilted to the right, right? So I don't want that. If I can make it just a little bit more better, I will. So press R, move it and see, look at that. Now it's so much more aligned, right? With this aligned, just go into edge and it should select your edge. And now it's so much easier to do this. So. If you go to the side view, okay, it's perfect. Yeah, you don't have to worry. So press E and then X, ta-da, and then you pull this. This is the exact shape we wanted, right? So I hope that helped. So that's basically how you would get that. And once this is done, press F and you'll fill it, right? And once that's complete, guys, all you have to do now is, you know, all these edges and stuff you can optimize it if you really want. If you want to keep it low poly, uh, then you, there's something called optimization. Obviously, you will have to optimize your mesh, 
so what I mean by that is in this case at least, this is how I would optimize it. You see these extra edges? So I would just take these vertex and then select this vertex, this and select this vertex, right? And then I just hit M and then by distance. When I do by distance, you see this value, I'll just increase this and you see how it starts merging, right? Something like that. Or you just select this, select this and then hit M and then you just do at center. All those extra vertices are just one now, right? So that's optimized here. And then select this to this. Ooh. Okay, that's weird. Why is it not selecting all these? Hey, I don't want that. Okay, M at center. There you go. Do you see how now you just have one edge here? It's optimized, right? So you'll have to do <laughs> that for everything, but uh, I'm not gonna optimize my mesh for this video. Okay, so I'm just going to hit that at center, that at center, perfect, right? Now I'm just going to zoom up, look at that. Okay, cool. Now that this is complete, how do we get all the smooth curves? That should be pretty simple for the object. First, obviously, like we do, just transform this, go to edit, select your edge. You see that this is completely circleized. So select this edge and this edge, this and this. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. This curve is basically like this. See, it's actually touching. This edge is touching in the middle like that. It, there's no flat surface on the edge. You notice that? You need to go all the way here and then give it loops. That's basically how it is, right? Looks so much cleaner, right, on the top. So once this is done, right, uh, just go ahead and select this edge, select this edge, this edge here, you need that, and then you need this edge here, this, and this. Perfect. Now that you have this, you will need this as well. So let's select that. Awesome. Cool. And when you have those selected, now you can control B and bevel this. Look at that, right? So I'm just going to give it a small bevel, just like that. There you go. And you can see that your model looks already nice here, right? And this, just make sure that you don't over bevel this or else it'll flow into this, but that's not our case. And then over here, just select this face here and then you can just bevel this guys. Right, and this one can be a big one if you want. Go to object, right? With the model selected, just hit sharpen. Ta-da! Look at that piece. I hope it looks good, right? So it's as simple as that, right? Don't overcomplicate it, it's simple. Once this is done, you can just, you know, obviously this is a Boolean. You'll have to add a Boolean. So you'll just make a mark, put it in this, and then you can add Booleans. You can check my other videos. For booleans uh, or if you guys want a dedicated video I can do that you know what in fact I won't show you this but you see this cut here I'll show you that so this is done by boolean as well and when I show you that you can you'll understand exactly what to do for the other one right so now that this is done go into your outliner bring back everything awesome select this and then I'm just going to say origin to geometry so that it goes to the center and now just scale it there you go and then you can realign it so i'm just going to go to the top view press g it's somewhere here correct yeah and then scale it it's is it that small i think so bring it here right and then bring it down Ta -da! look at that see so you can always scale it, right? Once you get the proportion right, if you scale it, it will fit perfectly. And yeah, you guys can see that it's it's done. It's almost done, right? If you want, you can obviously, I feel is the scale on the Y. It needs to be thicker like this, right? You guys can agree that it needs to be a little thick like that. So when you're making the initial model, just thicken it there, right? And it should be fine. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of thickness, but there you go. Right, it looks good. 
Awesome. So that piece is done. So this is what I was trying to tell you guys. If you break your model into small pieces, then you can just bring them together and you'll get your whole model, okay? So once that's done, what else is left? This piece is left. Well, we can model that. But before that, oh no, what is this? What is this? How do you model that? How do you model that, dude? Okay, uh, let's try, let's try. So obviously we have a wire and then we have this stupid thing here, awesome. So I know one way of doing this. Um, let me know if you guys know a better way. Uh, and yeah, I would love to learn that as well. I'm a Maya user, Maya user, right? So in Maya, there's something called Helix. You can just add it and you can just adjust the spring and it's basically a spring, it's really cool, right? We don't have that in Blender or I don't have it in Blender, right? So how do we make this? For everyone who's new to Blender and if you guys want to make a spring or a wire or a coil, then this is how I would do it, right? So, okay, cool. Let me show you. So Shift A, go to Curve, select a circle, right? I'm just going to go to Top View, G, and then bring it here. Oh, make sure, make sure you move the circle to one side. You have to move it to one side, right? So you don't have to keep it in the center. Don't keep it in the center. Move it to one side. So I'm just going to bring it over here, right? And you see that the circle is like this. If I go here, is this the curve? Yes. You see resolution is 12, right? If I increase this, it becomes a smoother curve, right? I'm just going to give it 60. And now this circle will define the width of my coil, right? So you can see that if I bring this over here, approximately in the center, you see that my diameter is way bigger, right? Than the port. So I'm just gonna scale this in like that, maybe. Oh, that, that's perfect, dude. Okay, so I'm just gonna move it just above it, right? Now, I know it's a little confusing. You're like, what are you, what are you doing? Let, I don't know, <laughs> let me see. Let me see what I'm doing. Okay, so now when this circle is done here, go into tab and edit mode. Now you're in edit mode here. So with this selected, oh, please work. Okay, so we go to modifier, click on modifier. We search something called screw, if there is. Oh, there you go. And then hit screw. You see that? And now it's selected on the Z. I know nothing happened. Press, press X. Okay. Let's see, did that do anything? Or did that not do anything? What is happening? What the heck? Hmm, interesting. You know what? Let me do one thing. Let me just delete this. I don't know what's happening. Did I mess up something? Let me just hide everything. Okay, let's try this again. Shift A, curve, circle. Right, just press G and then Y, move it. Okay, and then just go to add, wait, just going to go to edit, add, search, screw on the X. Hmm, it's not working, is it? Did I mess this up? Okay, so if I have this, add modifier, search, screw, on the X, on the Y, on the X and Y. Oh, that is so weird, dude. Oh, is it because the center pivot is on? Bro, you know what? Here, let me cancel this. Let me just delete this. If I go over here, right? So bring your uh, circle, go into edit mode. Now that you're in edit mode, press G and move. Yep, that's the mistake I was doing. Now, notice how if I move this circle, guys, do you see the center pivot is over here, not in the center of the circle? That's the mistake I did, right? Because we want to, we want the screw to have a center pivot where it's hollow, right? Because the screw needs to understand that, okay, if this is my center pivot, I need to revolve around it. Because it was in the center of the curve, it was just revolving the curve. You understand? So, I think, 
I think this will make you guys understand it a much better way. So let me delete this. Bring all of these back. Right? Okay. Now, if I hit Shift A, add a circle, go to top view again, press G and X to move it here. Right? Now let me just scale this. I'm just going to make it smaller and just move it and just put it over here and then see if my wire is looking fine. Yeah, that's looking fine. I'm just going to scale it just a little bit more and then, then move it. Look at that, right? It falls perfectly within the bounds. So cancel that operation. Now that this is canceled, now let's try it. If I move this up here, go into edit mode. You see your circles edited. Now press G. Look at that. The center pivot is right there, right? So press Y and move it somewhere here. Okay. Or you don't have to move it all the way there. You just, because we want, so this distance, which you're moving it here, let me explain it. This distance here, this is half of the hollow uh, diameter you're going to give your screw. So for example, do you see this circle here? If you have the center point over here, this distance, this half distance is this half distance. I hope that made sense, right? So. Now that this is done, right? Now let's test it, guys. If this doesn't work, I'm just gonna quit Blender. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We'll try to find a way. So if you hit search and then screw, you see we got a donut. It changed, it changed. Now just hit X. Yes, we got a bigger donut, okay? But now, just hold on. If I move this, Ta-da, look at that, right, it moves. Now I'll just go on top view and then hold shift and you see that, yeah, that's a fine tune there, right? Now, here, here's the catch. With this selected, if you move iterations, oh, thank you, there you go. That's, that's basically how you make a screw in Blender, right? So there you go. That, that, that's pretty much it, I guess. That's, that's basically how I would do it. And now that this is done, what I would do is, can I just rotate? No, I can't rotate this. Obviously you can't rotate it. How stupid are you? Uh, let's just increase the iteration. I don't know how many coils are here. I mean, if you guys want to count, let's just count it really quick. Three, nine, 12, 15, eight, 19, 20, 19, somewhere around like 20. Let, let, let's just put 20 for our sake, right? Just like that. Or we can just go 16. Let's just go 16. Now you see there's a gap over here, but there's no gap here, right? So you can remove that by this thing, the screws. So if you press shift, there you go. See, if you want like a perfect, perfect blend. And there you go, guys, it's done. Right. Obviously, if you want, you can make this bigger. And how do you do that? With this edit selected, if you just press S, you can actually scale your coil. Yeah, that's how that's how you do it. So um, I can, you can just scale your coil like that. And there you go. It's more thinner, right? So it's more perfect. And then you can just go into your screws and hold shift. And there you go. Now it should be much better. Look at that. Right? Oh, and with this selected, you see the steps viewport, it's set, set to 16. You see how the wire is just very low poly. If you increase this, it should increase your resolution. Right? So maybe, how about 40? We go with 40. Right? That, that looks good. Okay. And with this done, we can just go to object mode. Oh, and I, re I realized, remember I stretched this? I don't want to keep it stretched, I guess. I'm just going to wait, select that. Uh, I don't even know how I stretched it. Did I remove the stretch? Oh, yeah, I removed it. Okay, I perfect. I'm just going to keep it this way. Let's just not stretch weirdly. If you guys wanted that thick, just make it thick from the start and it should help. Right? Awesome. Cool. Look at that. Okay, now that this is done, remember this is still a curve, right? So you select this, go to object and then convert and then you just convert it to a mesh 
and there you go. If you hit tab and edit, ta-da, you have a mesh, right? Okay, now the question is, how do we turn it this way? So let's see, if I hit R and turn it 90, there you go, obviously. So that's turned 90, right? But then we want this wire to flow inward and our wire is flowing outward. Like, notice how it's it's flowing outward, right? So for that, I think we can just change the scale. Uh, I mean, just negative the scale. So for example, this over here, you see how the scale is this, right? So if I press Q, all transforms, it's set. Now, this is the X axis. So if I go in X and then press minus one, the loop, uh, loop should change. It should uh, change directions. Let's see if that worked. Yeah, there you go, it changed directions. Now it's flowing inward, right? That's what we wanted. And once that's done, I'm just going to move that somewhere over here. Awesome. Yeah, cool. Just press Q and then origin to geometry. There we go. And then we will push this up just like that. Okay, now you see that this flows inward, right? It flows inside. So now we'll have to fix this. So just go into edit mode you can, and you can see that this edge over here, let's just take this one here. Let me go into side view. There you go, this is the center one. So you can select face. Just hit Alt, select this face here. Yeah, that looks good. Press X and delete faces. And then just select this, press L, and then X and delete, right? Once that's done, select edge mode, select this, and then I'm just going to go to top view. Mm, yeah, cool. And then press E to extrude, press X. There you go, right? And then I'm just going to press G and Y and then move it because obviously it's tilted. object right you'll have to play with your wire so it just doesn't you know obviously go through this but that's a very small thing just press G and this and then move it to the center this one I'm just trying to align it to the center of this circle here and look at that oh that looks that looks good <laughs> that's it so if you actually start off your wire in this direction it itself it should help you you'll have to play with the x and y though but with that this wire is complete so obviously you see that our coil ends here itself but we want it to actually flow flow down and then turn so i'm going to cut um my uh, coils length a little shorter here go to edit right so if i go here where is it Awesome. It's selected to face. Let's select that to face. Select this here, right? I'm just gonna cut it short till here. So delete, select this, press L, X and delete, right? Yeah, that's it, that's done. Awesome. Now, how, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I select edge mode, I select these edges, I extrude them to X, right? Just a little bit here, just a little bit. Okay, now that I have extruded this, guys, I know that this is completely straight. Like these have coils and they're moving and they're twisted, but because we took this edge and extruded it, we know that this cylinder here is perfectly straight, right? Now that we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select this piece over here, press P, and then by selection. That's going to just break this piece off. Look at that. There you go. I'm just going to go Q, origin to geometry, and then all transforms. That should remove the geometry again, obviously. So you just bring this back, and then you just set it to all transforms with delta. That should set everything zero, but keep the origin straight. It's, it's still here, uh, origin, over here and then when you go to apply all transforms of delta is here right now you guys will be confused why did I break this piece off it's because I'm trying to get this flow here 
you see this flow here that flow so I'm going to tell you how I'm trying to tackle that right so I go to the top view here this is so much easier than Maya dude <laughs> okay so over here okay cool now that if I'm right if I understand this right I can just move this right yeah the first curve comes from here so I'm just going to take that you guys will understand what I'm doing if I shift D I can duplicate this rotate 90 there you go and you guys will like right now understand that oh this is the curve I'm mentioning this curve here see this this curve here and this can obviously just extend back because we just moved it on that axis right so that's our first curve and then shift D to our Y and it's kind of straight till here I guess yeah it's straight till here right I'm just eyeballing this you can adjust this later let's just put it somewhere here okay once this is done shift T and uh, rotate it 90 G and I'm going to give it a bigger here because this curve is a little bigger right and that's it if we can get this working we're good okay let's see let's see if this works so what I'm trying to do is if I select these two control J now they both are joined right I'm just going to say all transforms let that happen right okay now that that's done I'm going to go to edit mode select edge select this edge select this edge right click and then do you see this bridge edge loops guys do you see how it bridged here let me show you see it bridged here but then over here do you see it's connected it says open loop right let that stay there and twist and do you see number of curve cuts if you increase that do you see how the curve affects it now the only problem is this this stupid thing about blender dude I don't know why it just goes all the way here I think if you go to blend path and say blend surface okay now it's much better what's linear oh yeah linear is just that but I don't understand why this merge happens here is it because of the smoothness Oh, it's because of the smoothness. Uh, you know what's stupid? I never actually understood this. And I was like, oh, Blender is stupid. But I just went against my own saying that you need to try everything. So I just played with the smoothness. Check this out, guys. If I set this to 0.5, I think that's exactly the half. And you see the curve is so smooth now. And you see number of cuts. Just hit 20. Yes, I'm happy. I'm actually happy this worked awesome oh dude I learned something today this is amazing look at that curve guys that's amazing that's so smooth right oh yeah that's perfect uh, you can see there's a slight pinch here that's because I put 0.5 just lower it if you guys want but or you can just go here and sharpen it and it should work no it didn't okay so let's just control Z wait you know what yeah you, you can see there are so many edges here that's why the pinch occurs so let's let's do it again okay because I just learned it, I just want to do it again. This is amazing. So extrude, uh, what the heck am I doing? So yeah, select these edges and then hit bridge edge loops, perfect. And then keep it blend path. And then number of cuts, 20. There you go, there you go. And then this one can be lowered. Oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. So 0 0.6 maybe? There you go, that's so much better. And uh, it should not pinch now, that's it. There's no pinching. So 0.6 is the sweet spot over here, at least for this curve. And now that this is done, I want you guys to go ahead, pause the video and do it for this, right? Automatically, just do it, just what you learned, right? Okay, so go ahead and do that. And let me just try it as well. So Control J, so to combine that, I'm just going to go to all transforms and then hit tab, edit, select edge, Select this one, select this one, go to top view, right click, bridge edge loops, and number of cuts, maybe 30, because this is the bigger one. Oh my God, it looks good, it looks good. <laughs> awesome, so go to object mode. There you go, look at that. 
So you guys understood now that you got the curve, it's so much simpler because now if you select this, this and this, hit control J, right? And it joins everything. Go into edit mode. Now check this out. You just have to select this edge, this edge, right click, and then just say bridge edge. There you go, that's it. So Alt, select this edge, Shift, Alt, select this edge, right click, bridge. That's it guys. And look at that, this weird movement here is being formed, right? So Alt, click on this edge, and there you go. And then just press E. Wait a second, what happened? Why is it not extruding? <laughs> okay, it's a, it is extruding. Okay, cool, there you go. And this is the length of whatever, however you want this much to be, right? And I think it's over here. Awesome. And then go into object mode. Ha! <sighs> we did it. I hope. I hope this is exactly, you know, what you guys were hoping for at least, you know, following the thumbnail. So a few adjustments here. Let's just go over this, right? You need, if you would adjust the screw in this direction, it would be much simpler, right? You can adjust how many loops and how the flow works. That's first. And the thickness is perfect, I think. You can add more coils. Obviously, this is shorter. For us, it's longer. It's because our coil is not that big. Just, just make yours longer and that should fix the problem. And that's pretty much it. We're good, we're good guys, right? So this is also done. Oh, save your work before Jesus says, I'm, uh, I'm just gonna take your file away, right? So once that's done, let's do this. Let's do this, this piece. Okay, now that we're doing this piece, let's just hide everything again. Uh, so hide that, hide that, hide that, and hide that. Oh yeah, and then hide this. Cool, awesome. Just model this piece. Remember, if we get the proportions right, we can always shrink it, okay? How do we do this? Pretty simple, right? This this is just a cylinder, right guys? It's, it's just going to be really simple. So Shift A, go to Mesh, select your cylinder. Obviously, the vertices is this, so I'm gonna increase it to 60 to get it a more smoother, right? I'm going to press R, Y, and then 90. There you go, right? I'm going to make it to this direction because we want to follow this. Okay, cool. Now that this is done, select select which piece is basically the cylinder and then extrude it after that. Like for example, now, if I select this face here to be this face here, right? Now I'm just going to set the width first. So obviously it's a little sh shorter like that. There you go, perfect. And go to edit, select your face, this, delete, this, delete. Delete these two faces, you don't need that for now, okay? Now you see this over here, you see that it's extruded, right? Just go here, select that, press E, you can see that you extruded it. Cancel the selection by right clicking, press S and then you can scale it. That's it, right? So scale that. And you can see that this is actually a slope. It's a slope. So what that means to get the slope is you move this edge. There you go, see, you got the slope, right? It's basically like this. And then give it this thickness, right? And once that thickness is given, you can see that now it goes back in. So E, cancel, S. There you go. And then let's make this metal part now. So E, X, that's the metal part. E, press S, and the thickness is that. And then E again, and then X. You can push this back in, right? And now just hit F, ta-da. You see how easy it is? Just extrude in, extrude out, extrude in, extrude out, right? And we got this. Now that this is done, Let's move to the back, right? Uh, I want you guys to go ahead. Don't worry about this stupid cut here. Just just model this, right? And yeah, why just model with me along like I'm explaining and you guys will understand as well. You can see that this goes up here and then it's curved, right? So E, cancel, press S, bring that up, 
and then you guys will realize that this is actually E again and then actually scaled even higher. You see that this is a straight and then it's pushed in. So G and X and then there's a push. Okay, and the E X, there you go. And then that comes down. You can just repeat this or you can just change it if you guys want to be more creative. So E X, push this out and then scale this just like that. Perfect. E again, S, push it in. Awesome. And then E, X. There you go. Something like that. And then this part here. So E, scale it. It's a little big. Okay. E, and then X. Okay. I'm just looking at my reference here. Like, my reference view and I actually scale this a lot so it actually just needs to be really small just like that and then E X now is it better it is but it's just a little bit more more bigger just like that and then E and X yeah that looks so much better right and then once you come here uh, just press F and we have our piece complete that's it right this piece is basically complete. Now that this is done, I want you guys to go to object mode and then hit an all transform on this and then come back to edit because now we'll add bevels to this, right? So firstly, let's start with the back. Select this edge is already selected, select this edge here. And you can see that there's a big bevel here, so control B, somewhat like that. Perfect, right? Now that that's done, Let's select this edge here, select this edge here. The bevels are not big, but ever so slightly, just like that, right? Perfect. Uh, these ones, if you guys want to add a bevel, you can. So this, 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 and this, right? Just add a small one, just like that, and then increase. There you go. That's much better. And then this one here, and this one, you don't need it, dude, almost. But then let's see, let's click this, there you go, right? I mean, adding a bevel will obviously make the model look good. So if you guys want to go ahead, you can add that. And then over here on this one, it's just a small one again, just like that. Perfect, okay. And this one here has a good amount, like that. Perfect. And this one, basically, you don't need a bevel because, you know, it's a different material and a part, right? What I would do is control R, click, leave that, scale it in, just like that, guys. And then what I would do is actually just take face selection, select this face, press E, and actually push this in. What this will do is it will give that, just that small divot that you know that this extrusion is a metal. It's a different piece which is pushed into the plastic. Right, and then just select this, uh, go to edge selection, just select this edge here, right? And then control B and give this a bevel, just like that, perfect. And then look here and over here, this and this can be given a bevel. Perfect, go to object, ta-da, and then press sharpen. It is beautiful, guys. You guys are doing amazing. Let's go. Awesome. Now that this is done, uh, the last piece is this, these three, which is an addition over here. So how do we do that? Control A, just go and add in a UV spear, right? You see that the segments is 32, just add 60 to that, right? And then rings can be 60 as well. Now if you press G and then X, bring it out, you see your spear is this way, right? And you see that the pole is off over here. So let's just rotate that on the Y 90. There you go, right? And then scale it. Once you scale it down and you are happy with this, zoom in, go into edit mode, guys. Select your face. Just eyeball where the center is. Yeah, this is the center. Just select the 
face on the opposite side, delete by face, select this, L, and then X, and then delete. Now just go to edit, edge mode, select this edge here, press E and X, and extrude. And then go to object mode. There you go, you got your piece, right? Awesome. So now that that's selected, just press Q, sharpen, there you go. You have sharpened your listing. Now you can just push this in, right? So press T, X, push it in. And obviously it's a little bit out like that, so I'm just gonna keep it up. Makes sense? See, you can see it, right? Now, here is something cool. If I select this, you can see the center pivot of this big piece is right here, right? If I take my pen and move it in any direction, right? Just this direction. Let's say this direction, right? You see the center pivot is on the pin. Shift S, right? Or what you can do, don't shift S. Press Q, go to quick favorites, and then you see origin to 3D cursor, do that. And now this origin is the origin of this big piece here. There you go, see, right? You can do that again over here. Set origin to 3D cursor, right? Now that this is done, guys, this is why I did this. Check this out. If I Press R and rotate it. See how it rotates along this now, right? Because I have this, right? And this is completely, yeah, this is good. I'm just going to go to uh, all transforms to Delta. And what this will do is make everything zero and one, but still keep the center pivot here, right? Now, if I just hit Shift D, guys, and then move it, see, you have a duplicate, but check this out. If I press R and then hit 60, you see how it moved 60? So now what you have to do is the whole circle is 360, right? So it's 360 divided by three because there are three pins over there. So let's see, is that 120? Yeah. When you hit 120 and then press enter, if you hit shift R, you see how it moves it? So you just have to shift D again, press R and then 120. That's it. So you have three prongs exactly divided three equally at that back. Look at that. So this is basically how it usually is, right? So this is how it, you can get three here. You can see that it's aligned and yours is aligned here. Awesome. So I hope that was easy. Okay, with that, this is the final thing. Let's do this. And I hope it really works, okay? And then we can call it, I guess. So. You see this here, cut here, and I bet there are like four cuts, or maybe five at max, right? So let's do that. So for that, just hit, um, you need a cylinder again, obviously, let that set to 60. And this, is, this, will be some, this will be a cutter. We'll use this to cut a portion of our main thing, okay? And check this out, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So this is a Boolean technique, right? I'm just going to move this, press R, turn it to 90, scale it down. And this is the cuts diameter here, whatever you want to do, add that, okay? I'm going to scale this on the x-axis, there you go. Move it down here, and then actually move this down here. Look at that. Do you see what I did? I just moved this piece down here so that it intersects with our model, just like that, right? And this will be our cut. So yeah, that looks good. So I'll show you what I mean. Now that this is done, you see it has all bunch of values. So let's clean that up, all transforms, and then origin to geometry, and then delta. Now that this is clean, check that out. Everything zero and it's center pivot, right? Now that this is clean, I'm just going to press Q and sharpen this first of all. With this sharpen, guys, Right? If this is going to work, let's say, let's say it's going to work. Let's just try it now. So we select this main object because we want to cut away from the main object, right? So select the object which actually needs to be cut. Select that object, go here into modifiers. You see there's a modifier added. Add another modifier, search, and then type in Boolean. That's it. Step one. Now. The Boolean asks you, what do you want to cut from? Like, wh what is the other object you want to cut, right? So 
you go here to this eyedropper and then you select this object, cylinder one. That's it. Once you do that, right, select this cylinder here and then hide it. That's basically it. You got your cut. See this cut here? So you understood what uh, the Boolean did. It's basically cutting that, right? So if I go here into Q and hit Shift, can I? Oh yeah, so I mean it did cut. The only problem is it has this shading issue here. I wonder how we fix this. Mm. Which cylinder was it? It was this, correct? Yeah, if I move this, yeah, you can see that it moves and it cuts. There you go, see? The Boolean is working. If I remove this, and then if what if I remove Auto Smooth from this? Hmm. It's still doing that. Okay, this is something which is new because I don't... Um, I don't use this uh, normal boolean guys. I have a plugin for this. This is why I got that plugin. It's hard ops. It's a hard ops plugin. It kind of keeps it smoother for me. And now I'm kind of confused. You let me let me try with the uh, what do you call it? The plugin and see if it makes any difference or else. Yeah. So with that, I'll show you how that works. I'll just remove that. Okay. So if I hit Alt W, you can see that. Hard ops is enabled. I'll just press D. I want a circle. I want a cut of 60. There you go, right? It's as simple as that. And then yes, I want the mode cut. Now that that's done, if I just go here, with this object selected, if I hit control, I can just create a circle, just like that, right? And then I can cut it, see? Oh yeah. It is weird on this as well. Okay, so wait a second. If this is weird, and if I sharpen it, now, nah, there you go, now it's fixed, right? Okay, now that this is fixed, hmm. if I hit I scroll, select my cutter. Guys, there's the, I didn't do anything different. You, you see this, the circle? The cylinder here it's basically the cylinder which I literally made right I just the plugin just helps me exactly just make the cylinder on the object and just cuts it's nothing different you can see that if I select this let me show you if I select the main object do you see how the boolean is oh I understood why I think it's because the auto smooth was about yep you know what remember I I did not actually want to use a plugin for this let me just go back all the way yeah, okay. And then just go all the way actually, where I have the auto smooth. I don't know if this will work, but remember this cylinder we made? And then we hit this, right? Yeah, and then we had this weird issue. If I select the main object, you see how Boolean is below auto smooth? Let me just move this up. There you go. Look at that. It's so much better already. The cut is already so much better. But then, if I sharpen this, okay, okay. So that's how that worked. What if I adjust the angle here? Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh my God, let's go. So let's set that to 50. Oh my God. We did it. We did it without using a plugin. I was feeling so bad that I have to use a plugin and you guys won't have the option. So if I bring my cylinder back again, go up here, right? Press G and Z, move this just a tiny bit up. There you go. And then hide it. Look at that, guys. Look at that. That's awesome. The cut we need. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Cool. So you'll have to play with this 
smooth angle here, guys. What does ignore sharpness do? Does it do anything? Wait, what if I lower this even more? Ooh. Oh yeah, you can see that. Now you can see these sharpnesses here. Okay, okay. Awesome. So that's one way, right? And obviously what you can do is you can add actually a weighted normal to this. Right, it, it's again a modifier. If you go here, I think it's, see, weighted normal, you can add this. And that usually helps, like, this is a hard op thing, so it, again, it's another uh, faster way. You can see that if I just hold Alt and click on it, there you go, and it adds a weighted normal. But that did not change much, I guess. What if I add a modifier, let's say, Wait normal. There you go. See? Just move this up now. Okay, and move this up even more. There you go. It cleans it up a little bit. And you can play with yeah, see? You can play with the weight. And you can play with the threshold. Hmm, keep sharp. Oh yeah, I wish I knew what this. You can see that it's changing a little bit, but it's not affecting this. But all I could do is clear up this a little bit. Wait, let, let me just close this. If I go into edit mode, yeah, obviously you can't see this because uh, we have not applied it. Right, we haven't applied the Boolean yet, but okay i mean the cut works but it's just that the sharpness here i don't understand that at the moment this is the thing the boolean on curved surfaces is really hard if it's on a very flat surface it just works flawlessly but when you come with curves right you know i'm just gonna i'm not gonna obviously waste more time i will learn this i will see how booleans actually need to work on uh, curved surfaces without the plugin i have a plugin if i work with the plugin it usually takes care of all this right it just needs minor adjustments but okay but at least we got this you can you can see that we at least got the cut so i'm happy about that and you'll have to repeat that again so if you take this cylinder here right you can just yeah you'll have to make multiple ones and then do it so if for example i'll just remove this boolean for now Right, just take this. Remember what we did for that prong? So uh, just go here and then origin to 3D cursor. Right, there you go. Shift D and then R, right? I'm going to move this and let's say, let's just say 90 for now. Yeah, let's just make four. If I hit enter, control, wait, why is this not adding one more? that's weird r and then 90 there you go 50 r 90 there you go now we have four right if you select all these four just like that Control j to group them and then origin to geometry transform and then delta now you've cleaned it up just select this add a modifier now just hit boolean again remember you need to move this above your auto smooth select this and then select that. Now select this and hide it. There you go, guys. You got your four cuts. So you have multiple cuts now, right? So for if you want, you can add five and six. That depends upon you. Just divide 360 by that and then move your uh, cylinder. But there you go. That's pretty much it, right? Now, what you can do is if you bring this back and you can see that in R and you can only see one, what you can do is press R, press X. And you can actually rotate this you can see that on the render view now you can see like two cylinders perfectly at least or maybe something like this there you go and then now hide it Ta -da. see your cuts now changed direction right so you can do that as well oh i just hit the wrong one but yeah so your cuts are now here right they're not clean but that's because i still don't know why I still need to learn that. But with that, I guess if you select this and then hit apply, there you go. Now, 
if you go into edit mode you should see that your boolean is applied yeah there you go now it's applied properly right if i what happens if i add it all now no okay cool awesome uh now i'll just select this 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 and then control j and it should join q and then origin to geometry to center everything out right and then i will just bring everything back with everything back i can just go here move this scale it push it back here and you can see that our pin is complete right and that's pretty much it i guess so let's move this center align that there make sure yeah it's in the center and there you go you have your pin right if you want to elongate this now obviously you can just go here go into wireframe if you feel that this is too short right now you can adjust your length over here there you go so you can say yeah that needs to be like that and then this needs to be somewhat like that awesome your object pin. there you go and now if you're going to solid it's complete And that's your reference. <laughs> well, uh, I tried with the Boolean without using the, um, what do you call it, the plugin. But I hope at least we minimized as much as shading issues we had. And overall, this model, I hope you guys understood. And I hope it was easy, right? But with that, the modeling session is done. Welcome to Blender. That's, that's pretty much it. Very simple tools but you know you need to know exactly how and where and when to use it but that comes only with practice so just keep practicing and with that this is complete in the next video we will texture it and we will add a lighting we will add all those emissives and let's just get a quick render out okay but with that i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you guys again for tuning into render test um obviously um Please do check out my other videos. We are so close to hitting 2,000 subscribers. I cannot believe it. So thank you all for that. Okay. And I really hope this video helped. Hey, it's not a clickbait. We're actually making it. We're actually making the thumbnail. <laughs> okay. But with that said, I hope you guys have a great weekend and a week ahead. And I'll see you guys next time. Okay. See ya. Signing out. Oh,